get aboard Chevron's Genesis gas and oil production platform, which is located about 150 miles south of the Big Easy. And there's only one real way to do that. Helicopter. Long for the ride was Mickey, the spokesperson for the Genesis platform. I'm a helicopter now, which is actually a first time for me, and I'm sitting here with Mickey. I'm looking around, I see oil platforms everywhere. Is it normal? I mean, how many are out here, actually? There are literally thousands of oil and natural gas production facilities to go from Mexico, and some of them are really big, like Genesis, where we're going today. Genesis is a deep water spar fall production facility, we call it. It sits in over 2,600 feet of water. So a deep water spar hole, what does that mean? Well, that means basically it's floating in the water, kind of like a gigantic Coke can uh, with, uh, with partly filled with water to give it balance and it's got a big production facility on top of it. So how does it work? The employees load up on a helicopter, what, on a daily basis and go out to their work? Most of our employees and contractors in the Gulf of Mexico work two weeks on and two weeks off. So when they get on a helicopter and fly up to one of our facilities, basically they're there two weeks. So, Mickey, is this the Genesis right here? That's the Genesis platform. We're arriving here just right on time. Oh, wow. The Genesis production platform completed construction in 1999. Since then, it has produced 96 million barrels of oil and 151 billion cubic feet of natural gas. It is the first spar hole facility large enough to support production as well as drilling. The use of spar hole technology allows oil companies to drill at deeper depths, which conventional seafloor platforms can't reach. To understand how Genesis was erected, you've got to see it. The 28,600 ton hull was built in Finland in two pieces. These pieces were ferried to Texas, where they were assembled. The 705 foot long, 122 foot diameter hull was then floated on its side from Texas to a spot 150 miles south of New Orleans. Water filled the ballast tanks at the keel in a controlled flooding operation. This caused the hull to pivot 90 degrees. Finally, the top sides were transported to the field and installed on top of the hull. So I just got off the helicopter. The weather is actually insane. These are all the crew here that work on Genesis platform. And we're going to go downstairs right now to get a safety briefing. Come on. OK, right now we're inside Genesis. This is BJ. BJ is a paramedic, an HLO, which is a helicopter landing operator and an operations assistant, right? Yeah, correct. And then right now, what are we actually, what are we going to do right now? We're going to do a U.S. Coast Guard required uh, safety orientation anytime you go offshore. Uh, that's required. We are a floating spar out here, so as the weather gets rough and seas pick up, it gets rough up here. So if y'all would just going up and down stairs, make sure you have three-point contact, me and having your hand on the handrail at all times. So this thing actually moves? With... Right, it does move. Best explained as a cork in the water, just chained down with 14 chains to the ocean floor, which is about 2,600 feet down. With the safety meeting completed, I had to hightail it across the platform. I wanted to see what this massive hull looked like from below. Are you JJ? Yeah. How you doing? I'm Matt. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So are we going to go on this? What, what's this called? It's called Fast Response Craft. We use it for a man overboard. Somebody was falling. FRC, Fast Response Craft. So when we're going to get on it right here, and you're going to drop us down? We can. We are 150 feet in the air. There's nothing beneath us except air, 150 foot drop, and then the ocean. I wonder how this thing actually lowers and how we get down. Oh, my god. No way. As we descended, I tried not to toss my cookies. Can we go all the way down and come back up? I hope you brought your sea legs with you today, baby. Because it's going to be a rough one out there. It'd probably be a good idea for me to let you drive around the rig, right? How long did it take them to build something like that? About four years to build it. How much does it cost to build an oil platform? This platform runs somewhere around 800 million. $800 million. And then obviously, I mean, it's got to be cost effective. So we're pumping enough oil, we're making our money? We paid this platform off in three or four years, I think. Once the Genesis was put into place, the onboard oil drilling rig was used to drill 14 wells that reached thousands of feet below the sea floor. 
The 14 subsea wellheads and two export risers were spaced 20 feet apart to form a circle, 140 feet in diameter. The 2,650 foot risers were placed over the wellheads, allowing the oil and gas to flow to the production rig under natural pressure when tapped. Genesis platform is held in place with a 14 point mooring system. There are 14 massive chains that are each 250 feet long. They're connected to 3,000 feet of wire rope and 1,150 feet of hull chain. By adjusting the chains, operators can move the platform in order to drill at different wells within the 140 foot radius. I went to go check out these bad boys that hold the platform down. Right here? See, this is what I'm talking about. This is a really big chain. How big are they? 450 pounds a piece. Are we going to move chains today? Do we need to move or no? We don't need to move it, but we can go ahead and run one. Coming up, it's one of those situations.